everybody my name is Sam and welcome back to the channel now to answer your question from the thumbnail yes I do need a class A CDL to drive this truck and trailer and yes I do have one now today's video is going to go over the topic that everybody likes to ask and that is do I need a CDL if I this and that and whatever uh, basic rule of thumb if you think you need a CDL for whatever reason, chances are, yeah, you probably do. Because it's better to have one and have that weight lifted off your shoulders than get pulled over and realize you need one and not have it. So just go ahead and get your CDL if it's even a thought. But today I'm going to go over in detail. It's pretty simple, really. But everybody, over likes, but everybody likes to overdo their thought process on CDLs. So the rules and stuff I'm going to lay on you pertains to me locally to Northern California, not to be confused with Southern California. We have trees and lakes and fun stuff here. But nevertheless, this is for Northern California or all of California, I suppose, in general. So some rules might change depending on which state you are in. So check with your local DMV office. Now, both of my setups here. I checked in with our local highway patrol commercial cop before I even bought these to make sure and understand what was legal and how to go about staying legal and what I would need to be legal. Now we'll, I'll show you my two setups right here real quick and tell you something about them. This is my Ram 3500. That is pretty much my backup. It never really tows anything, but when it does, it does it great. But this is my main squeeze right here. My 2008 5500, it is a manual transmission truck and it normally pulls the gooseneck that's behind the 3500. Now this is a pretty obvious case of something that needs a CDL, but on what level CDL does it require to pull this? And it is the same exact CDL that a big rig log truck 18 wheeler requires. There's couple things you have to do to get your CDL and things you have to understand about once you get it but in order to get it you need to pass your physical and then you have to go to DMV and take some written tests now when I went to DMV I told them what I was after and they broke it down for me and that's when I realized you just got to go for the big deal and in order to tow this rig you have to have certain endorsements when you go in you take your test you take your regular Class C written test, uh, and then you have to take your Class A written test. Not bad, but then to get anywhere after that to actually do something, you have to take endorsement tests. So, uh, tanker endorsement, hazmat endorsement, uh, air brakes endorsement, pulling a trailer endorsements, double, ta double, single, triple, whatever endorsements. There's a whole bunch of endorsements, and in order to tow that trailer right there, you have to have your trailer endorsement. In order to have your trailer endorsement, you have to have your air brakes endorsement. So, you are back to, you got to get the big league endorsement. Pretty much, it just, it's literally the same exact CDL that you would have driving an 18-wheeler with air brakes and everything. Uh, once you take all your written tests, you will actually have to go drive one of these trucks. You have to take it behind the wheel just like you did when you got your real driver's license. Same thing applies too. Once you have your written tests um, passed, you will have your CDL permit so you can actually drive while a CDL class A holder can ride shotgun and you can drive around and get some practicing in before you take your road test and that is recommended I got um, the guy that hauled equipment for us at the time he let me drive his 18 wheeler a couple rounds got a little bit of experience behind it uh, it is a little bit different of a game and now I want you guys to understand that uh, I don't really I don't claim to be a trucker I drive a Dodge pickup with a gooseneck behind it don't be hating on me. Nevertheless, you need the big CDL. It's a little bit of practice before you take your actual driving test. And you will go down there. The way I got it, I went through a driving school. It was a one-on-one -on -one teacher that uh, it was owner-operator setup. He came highly recommended. Many people went through his schooling and passed their CDL test the first go. Now, it's eight hours just one-on-one, -on -one, breaking down everything you need to know. He told you know, it goes through you have to do your pre-trip and that is like the biggest thing that's probably the most stressful thing because there's so much going on with the pre-trip trying to learn it for the first time on a truck you don't know you have to go through and you have to make sure all your lights are working all your fluids are good nothing's loose nothing's hanging everything's mounted and secured uh all your tire pressure you're supposed to if you have an 18 wheeler you're supposed to check every tire well you know make sure all your windows are clean mirrors aren't broken 
there's a lot of moving parts on a truck and you pretty much have to check every one of those also you will need to do your air brakes test now the truck I did this test in was a two axle Kenworth with a six speed fully synchronized manual transmission with like a 20 plus 5 big Tex air brake trailer behind it it was it was a pretty nice rig it's something I wouldn't mind having to be honest with you and uh, you have to make sure when you're doing your air brakes test there's quite a bit going on but the teacher I had had it down to a science just the same thing with your pre-trip inspection you know he just beat it into your brain so you knew everything that you had to do and it was he had a nice maze just embedded into your head on how everything and what you're supposed to say and it made it a lot easier having a good teacher on that so you do your air brakes test you check to make sure your air brakes are for one functioning uh, make sure they're hitting the max or the optimal pressure pressure regulates on and off certain stuff uh, you'll have to check your book for the actual figures because uh, I'm not gonna list all those right now so once you pass your air brakes test and your full pre-trip inspection which you're supposed to do every time it's a bit of a hassle but safety first once all that is done you will be behind the wheel now they're not gonna let you ride out on the strip right first go without knowing if you can actually do something with the trailer so they have a nice big parking lot cone set up take a circle well okay you can actually drive this kind of let's see if you can back it up first thing is straight shot pull forward straight shot back up you don't even have to you just back her up second one is offset back up another simple you're allowed to pull forward I believe twice before they penalize you and again those are rules that apply to me locally check your local DMV for changes on this after that they will either have you do a parallel park or an alley dock park and an alley dock park is 90 degree back up to an alley dock pass those then you finally get to go out on the road now I did mine in uh, busy old town Sacramento West Sac and yeah it's like an industrial area it was pretty busy main thing once you're driving around because you know how to drive if you made it to this point just do your thing check your mirrors put your blinker on leave your blinker on for longer than you would actually expect to that's one thing that hit me on and the next would be always look at your road signs make sure you know what signs there and which one you passed uh, overhead bridges and everything it's very crucial they hit you hard on that uh, and just do your thing you know how to drive you've made it this far uh, and just take it nice and easy don't cut anybody off remember DMV guys with you now pass that test now it's official you got your class A CDL ready to rock and roll uh, other rules might apply but each every two years you have to do a mandatory physical test to make sure you are actually uh, alive and breathing and can actually function behind a vehicle that weighs uh, more than a house type thing you know now I'm gonna go over the regulations and everything which apply and these are the rules that you want to know in order to see if you even need your CDL or to double check that yeah hell yeah you're gonna need your CDL so I printed this off of the DMV website just copied and pasted nice simple and easy it is three paragraphs break it down and they hit the nail on the head with this now certainly it says it right here check locally so certain rules will change depending on what state you live in but this pertains to my state I'm gonna go ahead and read it for you guys any combination of vehicle which has a gross combination weight rating or gross combination weight of Canadian numbers or 26,001 pounds or more whichever is greater inclusive of towed units which with a gross vehicle weight rating or gross vehicle weight of more than 10,000 pounds whichever is greater now this is something that everybody overlooks it's weight rating or gross but everybody likes to skip that one we'll come back to that because it gives a good example down here uh, <clears throat> includes tractor trailers types of vehicles such as 18 wheeler now this one right here is a, is a perfect example and they hit the nail perfect right here huh. some states check locally require a class a cdl when pulling any trailer exceeding 10,000 pounds gvwr gross vehicle weight rating even when the combined gross vehicle weight rating cgvwr does not exceed 26,000 pounds example 
a one-ton dually pulling a trailer exceeding 10,000 pounds, but the truck GVWR plus the trailer GVWR not exceeding 26,000 pounds. Now, most states have an exemption for private recreational travel trailers. Check locally. Now, the main thing out of that is rating okay let's just we'll break it down this one is pretty obvious okay the truck is rated at 14,000 GVWR and the trailer is rated at 30,000 GVWR now you can look in the truck door for GVWR but the trailer right here it it freaking it sends it over the top come on right there GVWR 30,000 pounds now the GVWR the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer alone is over 26,001 pounds. Now this is gonna make some people mad in the comment section because the rules might be different in your area. I can't say that enough times. But for here, the weight rating is where it hits. So we'll check this out. We'll use this setup for an example right here. Let's just pretend that this truck, GVWR, is 12,000 pounds. Pretend, it's not actually that. And this trailer right here is actually 14,000 pound GVWR trailer. It has two 7,000 pound axles. So my gross vehicle weight rating of the two combination of these rigs is 26,000 pounds. Now, what everybody likes to say is, well, that's 26,000 pounds, it's not 26,001. Oh, I mean, it's so close, but then it's not because the trailer is rated at 14,000, okay? We come back up here. Pulling a trailer exceeding 10,000 pounds, but the truck and trailer together is not exceeding 26,000 pounds. Need a CDL. But we can switch this around and we'll go, let's, we'll show an actual example of it real quick, okay? So, we'll go like this. This is a perfect example of it. This is something that would be a CDL exempt load. You take that truck right there. It is rated at 14,000 pound GVWR. And we'll go over to this trailer right here. Now this trailer is an outlaw trailer. It has two eight lug axles. They are pretty much exactly identical axles to the yellow trailer over there. But this trailer, its weight rating is less than 10,000 pounds. The tag on this thing is some 9,800 pounds. So that thing right there is right under the limit of the 10,000 pound rating for a CDL. So you add that 14 plus 9,800, you're under the 26,001 pound, or you're under 26,000 pounds. But if the other thing is if you take that trailer, which is rated just under 10,000 pounds, and you put it behind this truck, GVWR on this is 19,500 pounds. So 19 plus a rough 10, is 29.5 that is over the 26,000 in one pounds everybody likes to go off the basic rule of thumb saying if I stay under 26,000 pounds I don't need a CDL uh, yes and no because it comes down to your rating and it's always been the rating because that'd be saying this plus my gooseneck weighing 19,000 pounds. That's saying, oh, I could do it. Legally drive that around. But actually, it's legal to even tow that trailer unless you have your CDL. Uh, even of which you, even of which if that rule was the way you figured it, you could only put like five, 6,000 pounds on there. And what's the point of having a big tandem dually gooseneck if you're just going to put uh, something that um, a 7,000 pound axle could haul? It's not even point, there's no point behind it. So again, don't beat me up too much in the comment section about your rules and regulations in the state you are in. These are my rules in my state. California might have different rules than you. I'm fairly certain it does. We got some stingy ones around here. But to break it down the best I can, because people like to ask me, do you have a CDL? Yeah, I got a CDL. I have to have a CDL. It is illegal. I'm an outlaw, but I'm not going to do that one. The question people like to ask is about their recreational vehicles, you know, their toy haulers. It's kind of funny. I've always kind of figured uh, you could get away with a lot of stuff if you got your travel trailer behind your truck. 
I mean, those things, they're not light. You can load them down with all your dirt bike squad, side, whatever, razors and stuff in there. You're going to be grossing some pretty heavy weight. And for some reason, you don't need your CDL for that. I always kind of joked that if you just took one of those and put a big old enclosed box on it and just towed whatever you wanted, you didn't need a CDL. But you just got to man up and get your CDL if you think that um, there's a chance you need it. Just get it done and be on with it. Thank you guys for watching. That is the CDL and how I got my CDL. And uh, if you're wondering, in my driving school, it costs about $600 and DMV fees and such. It cost me about $1,000 to get my Class A CDL. Uh, you have to maintain it each year. And things you have to look out for when you have your CDL is you can get away with a truck like that. I have most of my towing is personal use again i've said that already but most of my towing is personal use so i have a not for hire up there i haul my own equipment so this truck is debadged as far as commercial stuff and this one is not because this is the main one per my california regulations with my local highway patrol commercial cop officer i am up to code and ready to rock and roll uh insurance registration it all costs more when you're towing this kind of stuff and if you were worried about the kind of weight that these trucks can haul they can do it i would not be hauling with these if i did not think that they could do it or did not know they could do the kind of weight that i haul with them they are still pickups regardless of what regulations and rules you have to follow behind them they are still pickups and as i always vote i would say for 5,500 for hauling this weight purely because of the safety factor in the amount of braking power they have. 3,500 does a good job, but it does not, not hold up nearly as good as what a 5,500 does. And if you've watched my other videos, you will know that I take my braking power very seriously along with horsepower, but brakes come first. I have outfitted this thing with numerous and multiple engine brakes so I can have the maximum braking power that I can out of the engine before needing my service brakes. But that will conclude today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found some good information in it. Now, I have filmed this video five times. I did not want to mess this one up because there's some very critical information in this and I did not want to mess it up for you guys. So don't beat me up too hard for giving you the honest truth behind these rigs. And as always, I'm not trying to have a pissing match if you guys have a Ford, Dodge, Ford, Ram, whatever. These are still Dodges. We'll scratch out the Ram and put a Dodge sign over it. These are the trucks that get the job done for me. Maybe later on I will upgrade. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit them buttons, like this video, comment below. Let me know if you have your CDL and what you haul. Uh, always interested in having good conversation with you guys. Ah, go ahead and share this video if you would be so kind and we'll see you on the next one. Thumbs up only, no dislikes.